Lou, whenever so you're ready. We will call this meeting of the Finance and Operations Committee to order at 6.04. We are meeting virtually in accordance with the governor's executive order. First thing on the agenda is a financial report from Matt. Thank you, Lou. We will start with our year-to-date reforecast as of May 21st. The current reforecast is projected at $511,984 under budget. This is an increase of about $140,000 from the prior period. And there's a lot going on that I'll explain as we go through the detail by major objects. So we'll start with each bullet and work our way through the three pages of the Word document. Under personal services salaries, we have probable unbudgeted expenditures of 105,000. This is a decrease from last period where it was 135,000. And the major change is related to the choice and substitute paraprofessional salaries. Prior period, we were projecting about $50,000 over budget. Now we're only at 20,000. The potential savings of 527 is down slightly from prior period. It was 536,000. And these are just some minor adjustments as we went through all the detail and tweaked some of our accounts. Uh, looking at our unpaid FMLA, we're at 135 versus 140 from the prior period. The reduction in substitute teachers, we're at 105 versus 125 from the prior period. That's just looking at our long-term subs as we go through the end of the year. And the MOU with spring sports stipends that actually increased to 112 from 101. Looking at our benefits object codes, we have potential savings of just under 80,000. This is an increase of about 10,000 from prior period. And three of the four components in that bullet have not changed. The last one is new for this period, the projected unemployment insurance cost of 10,000. We haven't seen anything come from the state related to unemployment, and typically there are two to three months in arrears. So at this point, I'm comfortable projecting about 10,000 savings in that account. Under purchase professional and technical services, we have probable unbudgeted expenditures of 95,000. This is down from 105 from the previous period, but again, it's related to pupil services for special education costs. The potential savings of 90,000 is a large increase from prior period. We had it projected at 25,000, which was just on legal services. Now that we've had another month of school closure, we've looked at our admissions and field trips, our employee training and development, and our other professional and technical services, and we've been able to project more significant savings for all those accounts. Under purchase property services, this is new for the May period. We have potential savings of 50,000, the result of reduced spending in instructional repairs and maintenance due to school closure. Again, that's for the three month period that there's been no school in session and no repairs or maintenance being conducted on our equipment. Under, Matt, if I could just ask one quick question there. Yes. Just to be clear, that's not to mean that if school started back from the building tomorrow, I mean, these are repairs we're just putting off, correct? That would have. Not necessarily. Some of it is contingency based too, that we have money set aside if there's a kiln repair or a sewing machine, something to that nature. Gotcha. Other purchase services, we have probable unbudgeted expenditures of 605. This is a large increase from the prior period where it was projected at 445. And the reason for this is under our outplaced students at private facilities. In April and the months prior to that, we had anticipated additional choice revenue from the state to offset the cost. Unfortunately, the state is not agreeing to our projected 3% choice enrollment. They're holding at 2.99, so we're not going to see any additional revenue, and that is the reason for that adjustment. We do have potential savings of 302,000, which is an increase of almost 100,000 from April. And this is due to the transportation contract amendments, a savings of about 189,000. And that more or less offsets the loss in choice revenue. Under supplies, we have a new item for this period. 
unbudgeted expenditures of 51,000. And this is due to a prior year receivable related to WHS Eversource billing. Uh, Bobby is familiar with this from last year at the finance subcommittee meetings. There was a period of about five or six months where the high school was billed at a variable rate on the supplier side versus the fixed where all of our other buildings on the town and the board of ed are all at a fixed rate. So this was discovered. We're attempting to recoup the cost from Eversource and also from the Capital Region Council of Governments. They were assisting with that. But at this time, our emails have gone unanswered. We're still going to attempt to co collect those, that 50,000, but because we have the savings this year, I think it's best to essentially write this off because we have it sitting as an asset. We have the funds available. We should expense it and get rid of it. We'll still attempt to collect as the months go on, but it's just not looking positive at this point. And just a little background, Matt, you were a wonderful detective in this because you realized that their bill for their electricity was higher than the rest of the schools. And even investigating found out that they were on a different setup. Correct. Right. Yep. right. Yeah, it was the only only building in the district and that should not have been, but we're just, we're running out of avenues to pursue to recoup those those funds. Okay, great try. Yeah, and like I said, we'll continue, but at this point with the way the year is going, it's best to expense that. And if we get it in another year, that's great. Yeah, I just wanna to speak to the open choice piece. I appealed to the state twice with regard to open choice. It came down to a grand total of one student, <laughs> one student that came aboard, was in the process of doing the registration with us, was being counted under PSIS, the public school information system on another district. Did the um, registration paperwork in September, late September, did not join our district on PSIS until October 6th. The state would not allow that student to be counted under our count. Hence, we are at 2.99 versus 3.00. Uh, so that's the difference there. Um, my conversation with the uh, gentleman from the state, he made it clear that, you know, it's the difference between may and shall. Uh, so from an auditing perspective, they could not give us credit for the student, in spite, in spite of the fact that the student is with us and the student will be counted for this coming year. And I just want to back up for one minute under other purchase services. We had another item that we are going to write off for this year. It's about $10,000 that was due from the city of Hartford for homeless transportation from the prior fiscal year. Under McKinney Vento, we had attempted to recoup half the cost of transporting a student and Hartford is unwilling to pay at this point. We've tried for many months, no response to the email. So at this point we have it as a receivable, but we're going to expense it in this year. The last page for supplies, we have potential savings of 275,000. This is an increase from 220 in the April period. Again, we have the 75% spending cap since July 1st, but we're also analyzing our spending with the three months of closure. So we've increased um, our books, our savings from books and periodicals or, or lack of, and the technology supplies, we're gonna see additional savings in that account. Property and miscellaneous, this is another new addition for the May period. We have potential savings of 44,000, result of reduced spending, again, due to school closure for an extended period. Instructional equipment of 10,000, non-instructional equipment of 2,000, technology equipment of 20,000, and dues and fees for 10,000. So that's how we get to the 512,000, approximately. Matt, I have a question. Um, early on, um, and actually for Michael too, are we doing any neuropsychs? Are kids going out for um, any kind of um, psychiatric or neuropsych exams? Yeah, I can't yeah. answer that specifically. I know the, the invoices for our pupil service contractors are still coming in. That's where we're projecting over budget, but I, I don't know the specifics. John would have to speak to that. Okay. Yeah, I, Bobby, I'm not aware of any that are in the pipeline at this particular juncture. They are doing uh, some 504 and some PPT meetings. So those obviously are um, a requirement by law. So those will continue to come in over the course of time. Uh, but right now, our focus has been to maintain uh, individualized education plans 
um, through distance learning. So uh, I would uh, assume at this point in time that we have not had any scheduled. Uh, however, they will be forthcoming. Okay, thank you. Any other questions on that part of the budget? Ken, are you are you up? Sorry, go ahead, Jim. Um, are you in, Ken? Is Ken in? Yeah, I think I think Ken can unmute and we can hear him maybe. Um, Matt, do you know if these savings are going to? I guess what's your outlook for the for the remainder of the? Uh, I, I think this is pretty tight right now. We may have some fluctuation you know, at the scale of tens of thousands of dollars, but I'm not looking at another hundred to two hundred thousand. I would say. Okay. You know, you have with a $55 million budget fluctuation of 50 to 100 per month is common. I think we'd be on the low side of that. Has any of this been communicated to town council, town manager, any of the savings that we have by as of May 21st? Yeah, Bobby, I'm in regular communication with the uh, mayor on a daily basis about what's going on. So he's well aware in that's uh, in the council's well aware we made it uh, at our workshop that we are at 500,000 or so okay. projected. So no, they're well aware of our savings. Good. Uh, so this, this, is Ken. this is posted on the website as of this meeting. So it's available for the public. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Ken. Hey. All right. So <laughs> I apologize for the technical difficulties and sorry I was late. I tried several times to get in, but uh, Matt, my question is, and I think I know the answer, but just to double check, can any of these savings be applied to the 2021 budget? I believe that is the intention. We just need to have the discussion with town council. They fully intend to let us use all savings for next year's budget. Okay, great. Great. Thanks, Chuck. Yep. And we talked about that in the town council board workshop two weeks ago. And we talked about how I think last time they did it, they just offset the uh, health care insurance, right? Matt? Correct. Yep. So that's probably what we'll do, Ken. Yeah, that was the easiest, me easiest method in that year. So just as a follow-up, Matt, if they're going to be um, making a final decision on the budget in the, perhaps the next week or two, are these probably the final figures to provide to them? I think so. I, I wouldn't be comfortable going any higher. There okay. are certainly our variables over the next month, but we're not going to see anything more significant than what we're projecting. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, moving on to the 2021 budget. Any discussion? Comments? So the one thing I'll start off with, I just want to bring up my email here. Um, we do have one item that we'll have to discuss with council, how we add back to the budget. On the defined benefit pension contribution, we budgeted 5%, which is based on historical. Uh, our, I mean, the town and the board actuary, they updated the mortality tables and they also reduced the um, rate of return on investments in the fund. So rather than a 5%, we're looking at a 37% increase. So that's $163,000 we not have budgeted. And I, the town side, I don't have their number, but they had a significant increase as well. Oh. Now that's one item for discussion. I know Mike O'Neill had mentioned if we moved to the uh, express scripts with the prescription that we would have significant savings to offset that increase, but unfortunately we're not doing that for 2021. And is there um, any government money coming in? We did hear Michael about that last meeting. Yeah, the, the CARES Act, we're slated for uh, approximately 274000 uh, through the CARES Act. Um, as I've said, I said it during the budget workshop, I'll say it again, that money is going to come with assurances. Uh, Chris Healy already determined that some of that money will need to be allocated to uh, Corpus Christi as a non-public that resides in Weathersfield. Um, yeah, that's right. That's right on it, yeah. 
Yeah, and I'm waiting for um, the application to come out to see if there are any other assurances where it limits how and how we spend that money and what we spend that money on. So um, we need to proceed with caution with regard to that. Any other questions on budgets? Uh, just uh, with regard, just another comment. Um, obviously, this being the pandemic, we have uh, monitored our expenditures related to uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we will submit as will the town for reimbursement uh, to the extent we can. Uh, typically speaking, reimbursement um, is slim pickings. Uh, it takes a long time to get it. And oftentimes you don't qualify, but we're gonna take a crack at it nonetheless. Great. Any other business questions? No. Do we have an update on Chromebooks and the lunch program? Unless we're going to hear about that later, and then we can wait. No, be happy to provide that. Uh, Chromebooks, I'm very pleased to report we have 2,000 Chromebooks uh, socially distanced over at Web in the gym right now. Our IT team, along with uh, several of our crossing guards, nah. we rehired them and we reallocated, so they are their work. And so um, we had IT team and crossing guards um, uh, taking them out of boxes today. Uh, they will move from the gym to the cafeteria where they will be imaged and prepped and uh, identified so that we can prepare to get them out uh, to kids when the seniors bring theirs back coming up, uh, in, I think it's on June 8th. With regard to the lunch program, the latest I know, Lou, I actually saw you over on, on Friday, um, I was talking with Bobby Schultz. Um, I understand that the federal government has uh, signed off on the waiver with regard to continue the lunch program, but Bobby tells me the state of Connecticut has not. So oh. what will happen with the lunch program? Um, we believe it's going to be uh, limited to those districts that have an aggregate percentage of free and reduced um, students at 50% or higher. Um, we don't meet that criteria at this point in time. So Bobby will keep me posted. Um, so obviously bare minimum, we will do lunch service through the 15th of June. If we're able to continue that on with the state waiver, we'll certainly do that. Anyone else? No one. All right. Um, I guess we will conclude this meeting. Yes, good. Everyone agrees? Great. See you all soon. We'll see you at seven. Thank you, Lou. Thank you, guys. See you soon. See you shortly.